Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Storky Farmstead. I am so excited about this video. Today's video, taking you to my dad's property. He's 81 years old. My father comes from a sharecropping background out of rural Biloxi, and he is gonna show you how to organic, raised bed, container grow, anything you can imagine. He's gonna talk to you guys about companion planting, mulching, fertilizing, building beds, filling beds, how to do it economically. But the one thing I hope that all of you take from this video is the knowledge and wisdom he's telling you. The greatest message in this video, at the end he will tell you, just do it. Use your imagination. You can make it as easy or as hard as you want to. And I love that. And if you watch any of my videos on a regular basis, you always hear me telling you, thank you for rowing in our boat, that we are not going to do everything identical and we don't have to. What works for me may not work for you, but you already have everything in your hands that you need to get your garden going. Obviously, I garden the same concepts, but a different style. I am a no-till quarter acre market garden with only one raised bed. My dad does a whole half acre of container and raised beds across his entire property from fruit trees to herbs to pollinator gardens, the whole nine yards. So I hope you guys give us the 12 minutes it's going to take to get through this video. Even if you can't physically watch it, please listen to what he's telling you guys because here's the generational gap so many of us are missing. Here is someone willing to share every bit of knowledge he's got with you guys. So here at Starkey Formstead, we thank you guys so much for giving us your time. I know that it is precious and you have people pulling on you left and right, but we want you to be successful more than anything. We wanna lift you up and tell you that we are here for you, that you can do this. Walk your vision out guys, however you need to do it. Get out there and get something planted today. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. This is coming off of Papa Sammy and Ally Bugs YouTube channel. For the ones of y'all that are on both of our channels, we thank you for the support. Enjoy the video. It can be as, as easy or as hard as you want it to be. This is a raised bed. It was an old uh, pool that goldfish hit years ago. I mean years ago. That thing must be 25 years old. And look at my garden. Good gracious. Look at my yeah. so Look at my dirt. Look at that. Now people are going to ask me, how did you fill this bed up with that dirt? <laughs> Leaves. I dug down. It's hard to see, but I dug down a little bit under it. Kind of set it down a little bit. About four or five inches deep. And I put a layer of dirt. A layer of, I put cardboard in there. And by the way, if you're gonna use paper, put a sheet of a sheet of used paper, not a used paper. One sheet. Rank your leaves on top of it, wet it down, and put another sheet. You put a rolled up newspaper in there, come back ten years now, you can read the newspaper. It will not deteriorate, it just stays right there. No oxygen. You don't want that. But uh that's how I filled this bed up. That's how I did all my beds. Look. But wait a second. So you dug out from underneath this to just set it flush. Bit, yeah. And you put that two or three shovelfuls of dirt in there. Uh, on top of cardboard. On top of cardboard and, and, and leaves. Yeah. And then you add your own worm castings to this, correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh definitely. Uh, and then over time, it makes its own soil. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh well, I got my, my ginger planted right here. Uh, I came out this morning and sprinkled my worm poop. But I, I wet it down so it might have absorbed. But I, I covered all this with worm poop. Because I got ginger planted here. And uh, you see, the, there's another potato. See, I got a bad habit. <laughs> if I got something to plant and I find a, a vacant container, then whatever I got in my hand goes there. I'll have potatoes here, potatoes there, potatoes out front in the wildlife field. I got potatoes growing there and over yonder. And God knows where else. I'll know when they come up. But let me ask you this question. When you talk about pest pressure that most people get from a traditional road garden, do you have that same pest pressure? No. Because your plants are separated 
and they are contained across your property. So if you were to lose, say these potatoes to drought or potato beetle or to a fungus, you might walk over to the bed we just left there and pull a potato from there and it'll be just fine. And I found out over the years, if you've got a patch of potatoes, all, it's hard to see a pest. With that potato plant, if it got, it, it don't, but if it got that high, I can walk by and say, yeah, I got a couple of leaves looking bad. I go get my uh, milk water, spray it down, baby. The pest is gone. That's right. And most of your fungus is gone. And all of your plants, I want you to point out, you have great airflow in your beds. Your beds are full, but your plants, you do tall. Okay, so what is this right here? That's a thornless blackberry. So you've got a thornless blackberry. Yeah. Uh, right, that trellis is over a root crop there, yeah. a root crop here, mm -hmm. and then you'll plant, and I've seen you do it, a tomato or some herbs mm -hmm. where your berries are growing. So what you've done is essentially given yourself a tall plant, a root crop, and a short plant right. all growing together where air can move through your plants. Now get a close up of this. This is a weed. I have no idea what the name of it is or what they call it. My grandmother and my mother would strip these little seeds out and season their beans and, and beans and uh, it was a seasoning. Yeah, it, 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 we grow that at our farm. You gave me some. The common name of it is pepper plant. I have no idea what the name is, but look, got a very distinct flavor, very distinct. It's not hot, it's got a little, a little ting to it, but it's got a very distinct flavor. That's why that's growing like this. So you're mixing herbs and vines and root crops all together because if you come back to your garlic bed for those of y'all that are wanting to know how to control pest how to get good production without of a lot of yeah without a lot of expense like my dad said what pest look at what he's got and old tires he has berries yeah. running around and garlic a root crop all centered together I'm going to have a good crop of berries this year. So your berries and your garlic obviously are not going to share the same types of pests. No. And look here. Uh, here you go again, look. There's the potato. There's one there, one over yonder. That's green onions. I got out of Arkansas growing them wild. They're beautiful and they got a very distinct flavor. And that's asparagus. That was a big tree. I think the freeze killed it. Uh, I'll know in a few weeks and I'll put a new one in there. Now over here, this is my uh, different type of uh, onion, come out of Arkansas. This is a garlic onion flavored. This is uh, onions from Walmart. I planted 20 years ago. I've been using them ever since. I got spinach. See it starting to grow? Oh, wow. Okay, so we, College. if you guys caught my dad's last video on the raised bed planting your uh, spinach, lettuce, carrots he threw all of that in here and look parsley it's coming up coming up beautifully oh, yeah. and, uh, and and i came out this morning and threw poop around my uh blueberries watered them and that's my deep water there's the roof down and there they are i have to say papa sammy I, I watch all these videos i take all these classes the biggest thing i get from being around your property is the complete organic symbiotic sustainable loop system. I know I see your bees are everywhere. And look, not only them, look at your black, your black bee right there. Yeah, it's your carpenter bees, your yeah. native bees. Yeah, they native. And look guys, he's got a pollinator habitat but on the back. We build it. The one down there is good. Yeah, but you've got something going in it, daddy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And look right here. There's one there, there's one on the back fence, see? Yeah. They, they bring the native pollinators in. So basically what you've got here is a food forest. You have learned to grow your bushes and your fruiting trees right along with your row crops, right along with your perennials, your annuals, your herbs. Guys, I'm telling you, this man knows how to grow food. We thank you guys for watching. Papa Sammy, you got anything else you want to tell them? Yeah, just keep your mulch in there and don't have to worry about pulling weeds. You don't see me pulling weeds and hoeing a garden. I'm not going to do it. I'll just add more mulch. <laughs> more right. cardboard mulch. <laughs> That's it. More cardboard, more mulch.
But uh, you can get your material, your, your uh, leaves and, and stuff. You can get it from your park, if you're in a, a state park. Uh, they'll be glad to give you all that stuff. Uh, your neighbors might have bags of leaves out of their yard they're throwing out to, to get rid of. It's just so, it's just so many ways. Pine straw. Pine straw. I mean, there is a way. If you really want to plant an organic garden, there is a way. You can grow it in just plain water if you mm -hmm. got to. Yeah, you could. I mean, it's just a matter of getting up and planting. And, and like I say, that little garden like there lasts me all year. My two little three bushes, blackberries, they'll come in. And then my Japanese plums will come in. My blueberries will come in. Uh, my figs was coming in, but the freeze hit both of them trees hard. Ours too. I got my honey over here in my little hive. Uh, like, and my onion, my green onions to cook, my garlic to cook. And, and I plant some peas. Peas are very simple to grow. I don't plant a bunch of anything because I don't want to freeze it. I don't want to can it. I want it fresh. Now I will at the end of the year cut my okra up and freeze it or freeze my tomatoes. And I do freeze some peas and stuff. It, right at the end of the growing season. They're kind of bumping through the off season. But uh, it, it's, it's just, it, it's so easy. It's just do it. I, I've got old barrels. I've, I've got old, bar old tires. Um, I'm doing that one straight out the ground. It just, use your imagination. Go for it. You can do it. I believe that too. They can do it. Guys, you can do it. That's a message Papa Sammy wants you to take today. You got to get off your blessed assurance, get on your feet, get in your yard, and get a plant in the ground. If you don't plant it, it cannot grow. That's right. And God told you he would bless everything that your hands touch. So get out there and multiply yourself today. Right. Tom, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe.